Well, Madame Arcadi, the time is drawing near. And who knows? It may be receding. How very true. I do hope you feel in the mood, Madame Arcadi. It isn't a question of mood. It's a question of concentration. <laughs> you must forgive us for being impatient. We can perfectly easily wait, though, if you're not quite ready to start. Nonsense, my dear. I'm absolutely ready. <sighs> hi-ho, hi-ho, to work we go! Is there anything you'd like us to do? Do? Yes, hold hands or anything. All that will come later. First, take a few deep, deep breaths of fresh air. You may speak if you wish. It won't disturb me in the least. Oh, dear. An excellent dinner, darling. I congratulate you. The mousse wasn't quite right. It looked a bit hysterical, but it tasted delicious. That cuckoo is very angry. I beg your pardon? I said that cuckoo is very angry. Listen. How can you tell? Timber. No moon. That's as well, I think. There's mist rising above the marshes. There's no need for me to light my bicycle lamp, is there? I mean, nobody's likely to trip over it. No, we're not expecting anybody else. Good night, you foolish bird. You have a table? Yes, we thought this would do. I think the one with the drinks on it would be better. Change over. You told Edith we didn't want to be disturbed? Yes, darling. This is the moment I always hate. Are you nervous? Yes, when I was a girl, I was always very sick. How fortunate that you grew out of it. Children are always much more prone to being sick, though, than grown-ups, though, aren't they? I know I could never travel the train with any degree of safety until I was about the age of 14. Little Tommy Tucker, seems for his supper. What shall he have but brown bread and butter? I despise that because it doesn't rhyme at all. But Daphne loves it. Who's Daphne? Daphne is Madame Arcadi's control. She is a little girl. Oh, yes, I see. Of course. How old is she? Rising seven when she died. And when was that? February the 6th, 1884. Poor little thing. She would be a bit long in the tooth by now, I should think. You should think, Dr. Bradman, and I fear you do not. At least not profoundly enough. Do be quiet, George. You'll put Madame Arcadi off. It is of no consequence, my dear. I am quite used to the skeptics. They generally turn out to be the most receptive and vulnerable in the long run. I'd take that warning to heart if I were you, Dr. Bradman. Please forgive me, Madame Arcadi. I can assure you I am deeply interested. It is of no consequence. Now will you all sit around the table, please, and place your hands downward on it. Come, Mrs. Bradman. What about the lights? All in due time, Mr. Condwine. Now please sit down. Huh? Yes, that's right. The fingers should be touching. I presume that's the gramophone? Yes, it's an electric one. I can start it if you like. Please stay where you are. I can manage. Now, let's see. What have we here? Uh, Brahms? Oh, dear me, no. Rock cinema? Too florid. Where is the dance music? They're the loose ones on the left. Oh, I see. I'm afraid that none of them very new. Daphne was really more attached to Irving Berlin than anybody else. She likes a tomb she can hum. Oh, here's one. Always. Always? What is the matter? Uh, nothing. Nothing at all. The light switch is by the door? Yes, all except the small one on the desk and the gramophone. Very well, I understand. <coughs> Do sit still, Charles. Fingers touching, George. Remember what Madame Arcadi said. Now, there are one or two things I should like to explain to you, so will you all listen attentively? Of course. Presently, when the music begins, I will either walk about the room or lie flat on the ground. Then I will pull this dear little stool between you and your wife, Mr. Condamine. I must ask that you do not move or speak or do anything in the least distracting. Is that quite, quite clear? Perfectly. Of course, I cannot guarantee that anything will happen. Daphne may be unavailable. She had a head cold very recently and was feeling a little under the weather. Poor child. On the other hand, a great many things may occur. One of you may have an ammunition. Or we may reach a poltergeist, which would be extremely destructive and noisy. And in what way destructive? Ah, they throw things, you know. No, I didn't. But we must cross that bridge when we get to it, mustn't we? Certainly, by all means. Fortunately, an elemental at this time of year is quite unlikely. And what do elementals do? Oh, my dear. One can never tell. They're extremely unpredictable, usually taking form in a cold wind. I don't think I shall like that. <laughs> Occasionally reaching hurricane velocity. <laughs> don't you think it would be important to remove the breakables before we begin? Mrs. Condamine, that really won't be necessary. I have my ways of dealing with the elementals. I'm so glad. <sighs> now then, are you all ready to clear your minds? Do you mean we're to think of nothing? Absolutely nothing, Dr. Bradman. Try and focus on a space or a nondescript color. That usually tends to work out to the best. I'll do my damnedest. <gasps> Good work. I'll start to the brand phone. Lights! Oh dear! Is there any 
anybody there? Is there anybody there? One rep for yes, two reps for no. Now, is there anybody there? Daphne, is that you? Is your cold better, dear? Oh, are you doing anything to treat it? Oh, I'm afraid she's rather fretful. Oh, no, Daphne, don't do that, dear. You're hurting. No, no, no. Oh, wait. You say there's someone there who wishes to speak to someone here? Is it me? Is it Dr. Bradman? Is it Mrs. Bradman? Is it Mrs. Condamine? Behave yourself. Is it Mr. Condamine? There's someone who wishes to speak to you, Mr. Condamine. Tell them to leave a message. I must ask you not to be flippant, Mr. Condamine. Charles, how can you be so idiotic? You ruin everything. I'm sorry, it slipped out. Is there anyone you can think of who has passed over recently? Not recently, except my cousin, the civil service, but I can't see why I'd want to speak with me. I haven't spoken in years. Are you Mr. Condamine's cousin in the civil service? Huh. I'm afraid we've drawn a blank. Is there anybody else you can think of? Rack your brains! Perhaps old Mrs. Plummet. She died on White Monday? Why would old Miss Plummet want to speak with me? We had very little in common. It's worth a try, anyhow. Are you old Mrs. Plummet? She was quite deaf. Perhaps you better shout. <clears throat> Are you old Mrs. Plummet? There's nobody there at all. How disappointing, just as we were getting on so nicely. Violet, be quiet. I'm afraid there's nothing left for me to do but to go into a trance. I'd hoped to avoid it because it's extremely exhausting. But what must be, must be. I'm going to go start the gramophone again. Not always, anything but always. I'm afraid I must. It would be imprudent for me to change horses midstream if you know what I mean. Have it your own way. <laughs> Little Tommy Tucker stayed for his supper. What shall we have? Brown bread and butter. That would be Daphne. She ought to have had her adenoids out. George, please. Ah! Dear God! Push down hard! It's trying to get away! I can't hold it! There. Now. Ought we to pick it up or leave it where it is? How the hell do I know? There is no need to snap at me. Leave it where it is. Who said that? Said what? Someone said leave it where it is. Nonsense, dear. I heard distinctly. Well, nobody else did, did they? I never heard a sound. It's you, Ruth. You're playing tricks. I'm doing nothing of the sort. I haven't uttered. Good evening, Charles. Ventriloquism. That's what it is. Ventriloquism. What is the matter? You must have heard that. One of you must have heard that. Heard what? You mean to sit there, saw me, and tell me it's not. What have you heard that? Uh, I certainly didn't. Neither did I. I wish I had. I should have loved to hear something. It is you who are playing the tricks, Charles. You're trying to frighten us. I'm not. I swear I'm not. It's difficult to think of what to say after seven years. But I suppose good evening is as good as anything else. Who are you? Elvira, of course. Don't be so silly. I, I can't take any more of this. Get up, everybody. The entertainment's over.